In this video, I'll be spraying, stenciling, and playing with gold leaf using the elements from the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero January 2024 kit. Hi, this is Anna from Crafty Anna Studio. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I post paper crafting and card making tutorials. This month's kit is all about love. As per usual, this kit comes with an information card with inspiration on one side and the contents of the classic and the premium kit on the other. The first item in the classic kit is this three-piece fancy die with a heart that cuts out from the stenciled image. Speaking of stencils, this kit comes with five layering stencils. I will show you how to use the stencils later on in the video. The kit also comes with six sheets of camel color watercolor paper as well as a 4x6 stamp set with lots of sentiments. And finally, the kit wouldn't be complete without ink cubes. This is from their core ink line, Azalea, Summer Sky, and Moss. If you're a subscriber to the premium kit, you get everything in the classic kit including an extra bag of goodies. This includes a 10-piece fancy die cutting out flowers and a banner where you can stamp sentiments on. A small container of gilding or gold leaf flakes, sparkle clear lacquer pen, and a spray bottle of gold and pink shimmer spray. So let's start spraying. I have here what I call a splatter box. It's actually an old shoe box which I use to splatter projects in. I take one of the camel colored watercolor paper and place it in the box. I give the spray bottle a good shake just to make sure that the mica powder is well distributed. But before I start spraying, I make sure I keep a microfiber cloth on hand just in case the splatters get everywhere. Then I press down gently onto the cardstock. If I press halfway, I get bigger splatters. If I press all the way down, I get finer splatters. I wanted to add some extra detail in the background, so I took this heart-shaped mask from a stencil called Heartburst Stencil, which is also from this month's release. I place it on the paper in any random spot and then use the spray to spray on top of it to create a little bit of a heart-shaped shadow. Then I use tweezers to move the mask around. I move the mask around in random spots using the tweezer and continue to spray. Then I use a paintbrush to spread the ink around to put more emphasis on the heart shape. After I'm done splattering and spraying, I pick it up carefully with the tweezers. Here you can see the lovely shimmer and shine from the mica powder. I will set this aside to dry while I work on the stenciling. The stencils in the kit are color layering stencils and each stencil has a number indicated at the bottom according to the order of the layering. Number one being the first layer and number five being the last layer. I'm going to start with the first layer or the stencil number one. And I'll be using the paper in the kit. I'm going to secure this on my craft mat with some washi tape just to make sure it doesn't move around. Then I'll place a stencil on top and secure that as well with washi tape. I have here one of the smaller blending brushes from Hero Arts. 
and I'm also going to use the three ink cubes from the kit. Azalea, Moss, and Summer Sky. Let's start with Azalea for the first layer. I get some questions in the comments about this thing that I use to secure my ink cube. This is actually a trivet that I found in a kitchen um, section in a department store and it just fit the ink cube perfectly. So anyway, I get the ink blending brush and I take some of the ink and start slowly blending it onto the stencil. I make sure I tap off a little off to the side to make sure I don't get any harsh lines. I'm just uh, blending in a very light color onto the stencil because this is just the first layer, like a base layer. Then I take a microfiber cloth and wipe off the excess ink sitting on top. I forgot to mention that each stencil has small openings in each corner that you can use to mark the position of each stencil to make the layering easier. I use those markings in each corner to layer the second stencil. Then I secure it with washi tape. For the second layer, I'm going to continue with the pink ink, but this time I'm going to press a little harder onto the stencil to make it a bit darker. This layer colors in the details of the pink flowers. These stencils are actually really easy to line up. This is the third stencil and I will secure it with washi. For this layer, I'll be using the Summer Sky ink and this extra small blending brush from Hero Arts. I will be doing a very light layer for this one. So I tap off the extra ink off to the side before taking it to the stencil as this will serve as the base layer for the blue flowers. The fourth stencil are the leaves. So I'll be using the moss ink for this. Since this is the base layer for the leaves, I will just be using a light hand for this and I'll also ink blend using a different kind of ink blending brush. I'm not sure what this is called, but a friend of mine gave this to me and I'm here testing it out. I have something similar from all to new, but this one is a little bit different because the bristles are longer and I find that sometimes with the longer bristles, it gets caught underneath the stencil. So I'm not sure if I really like this, but it does serve its purpose. These blending brushes come in three different sizes. So this is the largest one, and you'll see me use the smaller ones later on for the details in the stencil. Once again, I wipe off the stencil before moving on to the last layer. The last and final layer of the stencil actually colors in all the details of the leaves and the blue flowers. Coloring in the details is a little bit tricky, so I'm using the smallest of the ink blending brushes that I have. This one has shorter bristles, but it still gets caught underneath the stencil, so I'm very careful as I ink blend each of the small details of the leaves.
After I finish with the green details, I move on to the blue details of the flower. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but these brushes come color-coded. They come in five different colors with three different sizes. The five colors are green, blue, yellow, red, and purple. And the three sizes are small, medium, and large. I wipe off the final stencil, and now it's time for the big reveal. This is my most favorite part of the stenciling process when you get to see all the details and all the colors come together. This took some time to do, but seeing how beautiful it turned out makes it all worth it in the end. To add some shimmer and shine, I'm going to splatter some gold ink. This is a gold glimmer ink from last month's kit. So I squeeze a little bit of it on an acrylic block. Then I will take some water and spray a little bit on top just to water it down a little. Take my brush and splatter it all over the panel. I'm going to cut down these panels, but instead of using a die cutting machine or scissors, I'm just going to fold it and tear it with my hands. This will give it a nice rough edge. I thought I was going to use this as the background panel for my card, but I decided to use the heart die to cut out the heart in the stenciled image. Whoever at Hero Arts designed this is a genius because look, you will see disguised in the pattern is a heart filled with flowers. It's just absolutely amazing. I'll be using this ink sprayed background that I created earlier as the background for my card. I will also use gilding flakes to add details to the edges. These are the materials you will need. A piece of copy paper to catch all the extra gilding flakes, a glue, and two brushes. I have these cheap brushes with very stiff bristles and a piece of plastic for the glue. First, I squeeze some glue onto the plastic. Then I take one of the brushes and use it to brush glue at the very edge of the panel. I make sure to place only a very thin layer of glue. Because if the glue is too thick, you might have some difficulty adhering the gold leaf flakes. After placing the glue, I get a little bit of the gold leaf and start placing it down on the glued edges. I start slowly and carefully just making sure it adheres properly. It may look like a hot mess now, but you'll see later on when we will use the other brush to brush off all the excess gold flakes. I use a flat, stiff, bristled brush to do this because if the brush is too soft, it won't be able to remove the excess flakes that are sticking to the panel. Now I also use my fingers to just carefully remove the ones hanging out from the edge. It's best if you let the glue dry a little bit first before removing the excess. It will make things much easier. I'll do the rest of the edges off camera and I'll come back to do the final edge. I hope you're enjoying my videos so far. And I hope you're learning something new. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more paper crafting and card making tutorials.
After cleaning up the edges, I'm going to dump all the excess gold flakes back into the container. Now it's time to assemble the card. I'm adding liquid glue at the back of the panel and I'm going to add this onto a, a dark olive card base. I added some dimensional tape onto the heart that I had die cut earlier. You will notice that this heart is gilded at the edges. I did this earlier. Now, I must say this was a little bit difficult to do because of the uneven edges, but I think it just gave this card an extra oomph and I, it was worth the effort. I then added You Make Me Smile Sentiment, which I heat embossed with gold embossing powder onto the same color olive cardstock. For the finishing touch, I added some gold baubles. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for making this far into my video. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in any of the products I use in this video, I will leave them all linked in the de video description below. In the meantime, I hope you are all well and I hope to see you again soon in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Bye!